In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he greeted on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There are many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A very familiar piece of Gospel scripture, my friends, a piece that we are familiar with, a piece that we might particularly like. And in this piece, two instances of the Lord's appearance in his risen state are brought together. His one message and it's repeated three times in this particular gospel. Is peace be with you. Peace be with you. And it's a kind of extension of what we heard in that second reading. Where he says, do not be afraid. It is I, the apocalypse. Because afraid they were, frightened. And Jesus comes into this scenario of fear. Then he commissions them because they become joyful. This encounter with the risen Lord changes them from darkness into light, from sadness to joy. They were delighted when they experienced his presence. He commissions them. As the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. And he gives them a very specific commission to exercise the forgiveness of sin. These two incidences of the Lord's appearance very similar. But on the first occasion, Thomas is not present. He is present on the second occasion. Thomas refused to believe what the others were telling him. But then, on the second occasion, Thomas is present. And he has a personal encounter with the risen Lord. 
who makes a beeline for him. Thomas sees the evidence. And the main evidence is the wounds on the cross, on the body of the risen Lord. Jesus says to him, Doubt no longer, but believe. And Thomas believed. He was looking for faith. And Jesus leads him gradually to the truth of the resurrection. Thomas proclaims his faith, my Lord and my God. And then Jesus says those famous words, Thomas and to the others as well. And to us. But these words are also directed to us. You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. It becomes, you might say, a beatitude. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. That includes all of us. And it tells us something about the gospel call. It's a call to believe. To believe without the evidence. To have a trustful faith without the kind of evidence that was provided to Thomas to bring him to faith. So we are all part of that story of faith. The gospel is an invitation to faith, a challenge that demands a core response an equal response, a response in faith. Of course, if we look back in the history of the community of faith that is the church, we've been given loads of examples of people with faith. And undoubtedly, that young Polish nun, Sister Faustina, had great faith in the Lord. He revealed himself to her in some way. And she was able to paint an impression of the countenance of the image of the Lord that she was then able to communicate to somebody who could reproduce that image an image that is full of meaning, an image that is full of signs, an image that is full of blessing and beatitude, an image that contains the signs of blood and water coming forth from the Lord himself symbolically depicting his, his death and his resurrection to the central mysteries of our faith, mysteries that we celebrate at every Mass. An important aspect of the devotion is clearly mercy. God is mercy. President Pope focuses very much on that. We're always told that God is love, but he's also mercy. God is mercy. An important aspect of devotion has to do with discerning what is the will of God. Jesus himself is our yardstick here, because he was always conscious of his doing the will of the Father. His whole mission 
ultimately led to his death and resurrection was his compliance with what was the will of God for him. In our own lives, we attempt to discern what is the will of God for us, using the Lord himself as our touchstone, as our yardstick. We stand now to celebrate our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I 